you have to be the one to shine your light. And that's one of the reasons why I named it Radiant Soul. Because Radiant, think of bright. Um, and you need to shine your own light within you. You have to find whatever that is that sparks you to be your best. And a lot of people wait, but I'm like, don't wait, do it now. So why not just find what it is to kind of ignite that fire to get to where you need to be? What led you to become a trainer and a nutrition coach? So I, it was my kids, to be honest with you. I have three children and I never wanted to look like a typical mom. Oh, gotcha. Um, I wanted to be a healthy mom. And that's what always motivated me with the classes at first. Group fitness, I always like to be around people. Um, I like the encouragement. The one-on-one, -on -one, just me, I think that was a little difficult for me yeah. because I like being around others to encourage one another. Um, so after that, I always worked out. And my husband was like, why, why don't you just get paid for this you're always at the gym and I was like I really never thought of it another girlfriend of mine with collaboration she posted at a gym and then he said you should just go for it and I went for it yes. and after that it it kind of just grew from there and it kind of all like aligned it wasn't so how do you stay motivated in your own health journey and what advice do you have for others who are struggling with consistency yeah so I stay motivated honestly it's my passion. I love it. However, there's days where I don't want to get up, but yes. as the instructor, I have to be there. Yeah. If I don't show up, there might be 15 or 20 people that aren't there. So I kind of put myself to the side and say, listen, if you're not there, you're not going to create your purpose in yourself as well as for others. Other times I just do it. I don't go by how I feel. If I went by how I felt, I would have a step every week. There's always something going on. I have a one daughter with special needs. I have a 13, almost 14 year old and uh, a 10 year old, a husband, a mom. So there's always stuff that's going to be around you. But if you want to be your best version, you cannot negate help. Yeah. It's like a, it's a, what is it? It's like a no brainer. That's, that's a non-negotiable. That's yes. the best way. And if you start looking at you first, cause a lot of times us women, we don't put ourselves first. And that should be the first thing you should be doing. I try to think small too, so you can get to the big. Yes. Yeah. I what are some common fitness myths or misconceptions that you've encountered? One of the myths is that women don't work out, like that wow. they don't strength train or that um, my hair might get messed up. I mean, to yeah. the point where I'm not going to work out because of my hair, but I'm yes. starting to see a lot of women come yes, and put in, you know, get their hair straight and or come back or make health a priority, yes. um, which is nice. But at one point I felt like that was a myth or like, even that we talked about going over to the other side, it might have some truth to it, but there are women who do it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I think you bring up a good one because this is one that really impacts the black community. Mm -hmm. Working out and hair. Yeah. Hair in the black community, our hair, black women, woo, we don't play that <laughs> with our hair. Yes. And true. we want to work out, we want to be healthy, but if you just went to the salon and paid two, three hundred dollars to get your hair done and you really want to go to body pump the next day, now you're going to sweat out your two or $300. Yeah. So how do you help clients overcome plateaus or frustration when they don't see what? We all want immediate results. Yes. So I have, well, I started in June. So it was a, so seven one-on-one -on -one clients. Um, and I explained to them, well, some, I'll give one example. You have, you have been this way for years. Yeah. So you can't expect in a week, 20 pounds is gonna be lost. Like, no, no, it does not work that way. So give your body time and trust the process. Trust the process. If you're eating right, you're doing everything that you need to be to be healthier, and you're changing those habits, your body will catch up. Yeah. Yeah, it'll catch up. Yeah. And honestly, out of the seven clients that I've started in June, it has worked. Everyone has had results, which yes. is nice. And their inches and their waistlines coming in. They're feeling comfortable in your jeans dropping down to size. Um, one young lady, it really wasn't about the weight for her, but she wanted to get stronger. She Welcome 
to Talk to Wellness Tea with Dr. Chalice. Listen, this podcast is about all things health and wellness. You know, as a licensed professional counselor, I believe that our mental health, which includes our thoughts, our feelings, and behaviors, also includes our physical health, which is nutrition, exercise, and sleep, and our spiritual health, which is our personal relationship with God. I am so excited to bring to you today the Crystal Martin of Radiant Soul Fitness. And she is going to be talking to us today about our physical health. And I'm so excited to have you, Crystal. Welcome. Thank you. I'm excited for the opportunity. I feel great sitting here. It's a nice, comfortable space. So thank you. Oh, my God. Thank you so much, Crystal. So, you know, I know Miss Crystal from the gym. (laughs) You know, as a breast cancer survivor, such an important organization called Inspiring Life Together, whose founder is Spring Williams, actually supported my physical health journey by gifting me with a one-year gym membership. And this is where I met the Crystal Martin. When I tell you she's so motivating, she's so empowering, yes, she kicks your butt in these (laughs) workouts. Okay, when I leave her boot camp classes, her body pump classes, I'm just like, look, I'm side ironing her during a workout, y'all. Like, I oh, love it. I love it though. I but do. the results, but the results. And then let me tell you something else. She's going to share with us more about her nutrition coaching. But then this beauty added nutrition coaching to her specialty. And I decided to take her up on the offer, y'all. I lost those last little bit of pesky pounds that I was trying to lose through her nutrition coaching. Mm, So, Crystal, why don't you start with telling us a little bit about Radiant Soul Fitness. Tell us about yourself. How did your fitness journey start? So, it actually started eight years ago as a group fitness instructor. Um, I was with, you mentioned Spring Williams. We were actually working out in the, in the church during that time. And she was an instructor. And then there was an opening later at another gym and I decided to go for it. And I started off with spin. Okay. And then after spin, my love was always boot camp, but that was the opening and the opportunity. And then it just grew from there. This, um, year is when I actually did the radiant soul fitness, where I became my own personal trainer with my own business where we collaborate with Echelon Health and Fitness and you're amazing with that journey. It's, it has been godsend, I'll put it that way. That is such a blessing. See the collaboration that you talk about, Echelon Health and Fitness in Voorhees, New Jersey. I love that gym. It has really helped me to get in such good shape over the last 14 months that I've been working out wow. there. And just to know that they partnered with an instructor mm-hmm. who is now branching out into entrepreneurship. Yeah. Talk about reciprocal relationships and God ordained divine aligned connections. Yes, definitely. Because they were one of the ones that actually encouraged it, to be honest with you. Wow. I was I always say this. I was okay being in the sidelines. I was okay being a member. I was okay. Um, but it was like God kept promoting and promoting like no you have to be the one to shine your light and that's one of the reasons why I named it radiant soul because radiant think of bright um and you need to shine your own light within you you have to find whatever that is that sparks you to be your best and a lot of people wait but I'm like don't wait do it now so why not just find what it is to kind of ignite that fire to get to where you need to be because the stages of change by Prochaska and Di Clemente. The first stage, so let's think in terms of weight loss. Right. Fitness, so you want to lose weight. Maybe you just want to tone and tighten some areas, but you want to get in better shape. Mm -hmm. If we apply the stages of change, the very first stage of change is the pre-contemplation stage. In the pre-contemplation stage, we're like, I'm good. I don't need to go to the gym and work out. What? I only eat a sweet potato pie a week, y'all. Stop. Don't need to change that so in a pre-contemplation stage we don't think that we have a problem that's true we don't have any awareness about it you're right but then other people in our lives are like um babe you know you ate that whole sweet potato pie last night right? <laughs> i did <laughs> babe stop playing you know you ate that whole sweet potato pie oh now you start getting more of an awareness so now you move to the contemplation stage well i didn't think this was a problem but maybe it is 
So we have pre-contemplation, then we have contemplation. Next, we have the preparation stage. Yes. So this is three stages, and we haven't even got to the action stage of change yet. No. In the preparation stage, we say, you know what? Uh, I do notice I'm getting a little bit of love handles. Yes. I am aging, you know, mm -hmm. and that happens in midlife. So go in and enjoy yourself now, because <laughs> as you hit those midlife, <laughs> you're going to see stuff and yeah. be like, ooh. But the preparation stage says, you know what, maybe I will start working out. Maybe I'll go to the gym. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll start eating healthier. Mm -hmm. And then we move to the action stage. The action mm -hmm. stage is when we show up at 530 in the morning to Crystal's boot camp class, y'all. Woo, child, that's the action stage. <laughs> And that's some action. I love yes. her though, because she whips us into shape. But then when we are maintaining these changes for six months, so now we're in the what, Crystal? The maintenance. The maintenance yes. stage of change. Yes. And thank God with Crystal's help and all of the other awesome instructors, I'm in the maintenance stage of change because I have been working out consistently at the gym for 14 months. Yes. Now I've always worked out along right. the way, but I'm pretty independent. I work out a lot at home. Mm -hmm. I'll pop a DVD or something on YouTube and do workouts, but I have been working out at the gym for 14 months. Now, after the maintenance stage is what we call the reoccurrence stage. Mm -hmm. The reoccurrence stage is where you find yourself, oh, I'm not going to the gym this morning. I'm just sleeping in. Now one day turns into two days, turns into three days, and now we have to get back on track. Guess what? With the stages of change reoccurrence, it's typical. It's right. to be expected that we won't be able true. to maintain our routines all the time or our eating and nutrition habits. But you just get back on track yeah. and you get back into the action stage of change. Yeah. I was telling Crystal I missed boot camp on Monday. I really wanted to go, but I listened to my body and I slept in. I just, I slept. I said, no, my body needs to rest. But I'll be back at boot camp on Monday. Yes. And I'm glad she listened to our body because that's important too. Because you don't yes. want to over exercise either. So Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. Crystal, you know, can you share your personal fitness and nutrition journey? What led you to become a trainer and a nutrition coach? So I, it was my kids, to be honest with you. Oh. I have three children and I never wanted to look like a typical mom. Oh, I got you. Um I wanted to be a healthy mom, and that's what always motivated me with the classes at first. Group fitness, I always like to be around people. Um, I like the encouragement. The one-on-one, -on -one just me, I think that was a little difficult for me yeah. because I like being around others to encourage one another. Um, so after that, I always worked out, and my husband was like, why, why don't you just get paid for this you're always at the gym and I was like I really never thought of it another girlfriend of mine with collaboration she posted at a gym and then he said you should just go for it and I went for it yeah and after that it it kind of just grew from there and it kind of all like aligned it wasn't something where I said oh I'm going to make sure one day I'll be a trainer it just I, it honestly just fell in order and with honestly God steps to be honest with you yeah I love that. And shout out to your husband. What's your husband's name again? Jeff. Jeff. Shout, out, shout out to you, <laughs> Jeff, for encouraging your wife, standing behind her dreams and goals, but you saw something in her and you said, babe, why don't you go and do this? Get paid for this. I love that. Yeah. That is so good. How does that feel to have such a supportive husband? I always say without him, honestly, even like with the kids, when I'm out at the gym or when yes. I'm training, he's there. I have that partnership where I don't have to be concerned about our family, our loved ones. So it feels amazing. It it allows me to do my thing. And when I, he needs my support, he does his thing too. So we always wanted to have things that were individualized where it's not just mom. Yes. It's not just I'm a wife. Like you want to do your passion too. So then you're not being resentful as well. Yes. Yeah. Oh, she just said a whole bunch of wisdom because, you know, I was looking at a reel and I actually posted it on my Instagram channel. It was a reel of Oprah interviewing her best friend, Gail. I saw that. And you saw that, Crystal, and mm -hmm. you commented. And I love that you commented on it because, and then someone else commented it on mm -hmm. it after you, and it was an opposite story. Wow. It was a story that aligned with Gail's story, which was that she was married at the time and Oprah asked her, do you think you would be where you are today in your career if you were still married? And Gail said, absolutely not. Wow. Yeah. 
she said that her husband said to her one time in a conversation he could wait until this Gail King stuff was over. So she didn't have a supportive partner. And there are so many of us women who we don't have supportive partners for whatever reasons. Like Gail said, you know, you're married and now you want to grow and evolve. And now your spouse, your right. partner is now having a hard time growing and evolving with you, which may make it difficult for them to stay married to you or for you guys to stay together. Right. So for you to have that and for your husband to be the leader that he is, and putting that at the forefront that even though he knows you guys have three children and a family and he has his own needs as a husband right he wanted to encourage you in your personal growth and development too yes yeah thank god yeah yeah that's so sweet because mm -hmm. then someone else commented um latice commented that yeah that happened to her and her marriage too okay and i know i experienced that as well mm -hmm. so i love to hear encouraging stories because this helps encourage us women to let us know listen girl Yes, there are men out yes, there. Yes, there, there are. are husbands, God-ordained, divine-aligned husbands who yes. will inspire their wives, Yes, who will not become intimidated by your success, Right. who will not become selfish when if maybe you can't spend that extra time with them this week because you need to go out and do your purpose and your mission and help mm -hmm. others, Yeah. but then still take care of what you need to take care of at home as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That balance. Yeah. yeah. How do you yeah. balance that? Honestly, I I have a calendar. <laughs> I know that's right. Calendars. And like an old school calendar. I mean like the one you write down. So man, we have one like a family one oh. where I know when he may have to do something for work or I don't. Or we, and we have non-negotiables too yes. as well when it comes right. with like our son with soccer. We know we're going to be there. So I'm not going to schedule a training session on a Sunday. Right. I did that before when I first started out. And I wasn't being fed spiritually. Yes. So on Sundays now, we make it a point to make sure that that's our family time, that's our our church time, or whatever you know, religion or whatever um, relationship you may have that works for you. It could be your yoga. Yeah. It could be um, whatever makes you like that that happy spot to make you kind of regain for the following week. If that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I love this. She is dropping some gems and encouraging us along the way. I love it. So why don't you tell us, what is your core philosophy when it comes to fitness and nutrition? You know what? One of the main things I realized is encouragement. I love to encourage and motivate because I she feel does. like when we're out there, there's so much stuff. You turn on the TV, there's a lot of stuff, whatever that stuff looks like to you. And I want it to be when you have that time with nutrition and fitness that you feel motivated, empowered, and not beat up. So, and I think that that word of encouragement, that light where it's like, oh, I want to come in. Even though it's tough, I know I can do it. Like I yes. always try to spill just a little bit of sprinkles on people just so they can kind of get through. And then when you're done, you're like, whoo, oh yes, but I made it. I did yes. it. Yes. Oh my God. And what she speaks is true because I actually experienced this. I know when I go to Crystal Martin's class, I know it's going up. Oh, let's go. Let's, I'm like, oh, oh, two laps, three laps. I'm, and she says it's so encouraging, too. I'm like, why is she so encouraging with all this work? But I love it, and it does keep me going. And, like, even, you know, when I'm doing boot camp and I'm struggling, like, I just want to quit. You know, at the very end, how yeah. it gets hard. And they yes. say that's the most important time for your muscles. When yeah. your muscles are failing, yes, you want your muscles to fail because that's when they kind of recreate and they rejuvenate. Yeah. Wait, that is deep. Wait, say that again? That is so deep. So that's when they recreate, they rejuvenate. It's like um, if you're just walking, you're, there's no sweat, there's no, you're not doing anything. You, you want that. You want you to get to your fitness level where you're about to crash. For example, when you're, say you're doing 10, 10 reps, the last three sets should be tough. If they're not tough, add a little bit more. And she says that too, y'all. And that's when I side eye her too, y'all. I'm like, <laughs> ma'am, I'm making it with just this little weight over here. Did she, who is she, talk, is she talking to her? I'll give her a little bit more. Cause I, I know, you know when someone can handle it, where, especially when they smile and they're just like, I'm like, that's great, but I need you to just give me a little bit more. 
Yeah. Okay, so I have a funny story about that. I remember, I think it was squats. Crystal, you had a squatting with what, the barbell? And, Possibly, yeah. Okay, and it was over our back, and I'm squatting, and I was just, she had a, a song playing to <laughs> y'all. I was like, yes, yes, she came over and was like, boop, boop, you're doing that too easy. I was like, yes. she put that weight on there, and then she said, I said, oh, oh, she said, that's how it's supposed to be. I said, yeah. okay, and listen, my hamstrings, everything is nice and tight, <laughs> y'all. She is telling the truth. I have one little, um, I say get comfortable with the uncomfortable. Yes. Yeah. So that's important. You don't want to get too comfortable especially if you're in a strength training or boot camp class it's called boot camp for a reason so we're trying to you know whip you into that shape where you need to get get to where you need to be no nah, i'm not doing my job that's what i say yeah, yeah she does her <laughs> job very well people yes she does and it's so encouraging and motivating but you know you were the first um you were the first first coach to for me to lift you had us on a bench and we had to lift the barbell and i was so intimidated because there were these big rings and i'm like crystal i never did this before and you're like you never did this and you're like i'll spot you and i felt so strong and powerful lifting those weights i just yeah. was like oh my god i'm doing it now i need to bring it back but yes that's, those are the chest presses that normally they're on the other side of the gym where most people feel intimidated by to be yes. honest with you with this strength training. And I was one of those people too. I would never go over there, really? ever, ever, ever. I was big on group fitness classes. And I said, it's time to change the atmosphere for more women. Yes. Because there weren't a lot of women PT, personal trainers. And even with my culture, I wanted to see more people that look like me where I could be the person like, yes, we belong here too. Yes, mm -hmm. I love that. And it's so motivating, motivating and encouraging because when I see women, because I'm intimidated, I still am intimidated. Yeah. Like I try to get on the floor more, but and I want to go over there, but I'm intimidated because I don't know how to work things. Even like last week or this week when I went and did the machines, there was a nice pleasant man who had to help me because I was trying to do the back abdominal exercise, y'all. Oh, well, I got in front of the thing. Okay. And he said, oh, it's supposed to be behind you. Just and He was so nice, y'all, too. I said, thank God. Yeah, and also I wanted to give people a tip. When you look at the machine, sometimes there's a QR code. If you scan it, it tells you exactly how to use that machine as well. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do that. Yeah. If I felt more comfortable with knowing how to use it to secure the weights on the bar, because I want to be able to do that barbell with the squats yes. that I see women doing. So you keep encouraging us because you yes, encourage definitely. us. I know I'm not the only one, and I know that this is a thing for a lot of women. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's a normal feeling because, like I said, a lot of times we're not there. Right. We're not. The, it's like the guy side, and that's the part we need to kind of shift. Yes, because we need strength training too. All people do. Yes, yeah. right. Because don't we lose muscle mass as we age? We do. Even with like the osteoporosis, as yes. it's for everyone, women too, and we need it to just help our joints to just be able to get up out the chair and sit down. Or say if there's some people who are not strength training, and unfortunately, as you get older, our, our bones start to kind of, um, you know, they get a little bit more frail, and there are unfortunately where they fall and there's a, a hip surgery that needs to happen how about we prevent that where you don't need the hip surgery you trip and you get back up and you're yes. okay so it's not just to strength and be strong but it's also to be functional yes. in your daily lives as we grow older because it's happening to us you know yes. to all of us yeah oh i love that so how do you stay motivated in your own health journey and what advice do you have for others who are struggling with consistency yeah, so I stay motivated. Honestly, it's my passion. I love it. However, there's days where I don't want to get up. But yes. as the instructor, I have to be there. Yes. If I don't show up, there might be 15 to 20 people that aren't there. So I kind of put myself to the side and say, listen, if you're not there, you're not going to create your purpose in yourself as well as for others. Other times, I just do it. I don't go by how I feel. If I went by how I felt, I would have a step every week. There's always something going on. I have a one daughter with special needs. I have a 13, almost 14 year old and uh, a 10 year old, a husband, a mom. So there's always stuff that's gonna be around you. But if you want to be your best version, you cannot negate health. Yes. It's like a, it's a, what is it? It's like a no brainer. That's, that's a non-negotiable. That's yes. the best way. And if you start looking at you first, cause a lot of times us women, we don't put ourselves first. And that should be the first thing you should be doing 
um, is exercising because it, it goes into everything else too as well. Yeah. It does. Um, what was the second part of your question? I want to make sure I answer it. Too. So what advice do you have for others struggling with in well struggling with consistency? Consistency, yeah. I, like I, I, as I said, it would have to be a non-negotiable. You just have to, you have to make it in your mind that I'm going to do this or at least try my best at least three times a week. Yes. Even start there. You, it doesn't have to be big. It, start with small steps. I think a lot of people, they want to go from here and jump all the way to there. Yes. I mean, I want to lose. I'll hear people say, I want to lose 20 pounds. I'm like, well, let's start off with two. Yes. Let's start off with two pounds for this week. And what are we going to do on these small steps to do it? Um, so I think a lot of times stop, it's okay to think big, but try to think small too, so you can get to the big. Yes. Yeah. I love that. It's like, what I say is all of these small steps that we take. So say if this is the big picture, say if this is the big picture, all of these small steps that we take fill in that big picture. And then as time passes, you'll notice, wow, yeah. I, I, uh, achieved my goal. Yes. Yes. By taking these small baby steps. Yes. I love yeah. that. Thank I love you. that. And so, you know, prioritizing others' needs based on your responsibility to the role you were called to as instructor. Exactly. I love that because that's very responsible. That denotes lots of integrity. And I've got to say, I've never known you to miss not one class. Every class that you we're supposed to teach you taught yeah there are times where i have like a substitute but okay. for the most part i'll let the, the members know ahead of time yes you yeah, do yeah I you do. have like if you're on vacation mm -hmm. which leads to my next question because yes we do based on what we commit to we do have to put others before ourselves but then do you have those times of self-care where you're selfless not selfish mm. selfless where you're now devoting time pouring back into yourself because we cannot pour from an empty cup. Correct. We have to refill that cup to be able to give it back out to pour to others. And we're both in the helping professions. Right. You know, even on your regular job, you're in the helping profession. Yes. Yes. And on this job, you're in the helping and I'm in the helping profession. So, you know, right. us helpers, we have to be very careful. We have to be very intentional and very diligent about that self-care time and time for ourselves to replenish. Yeah. So how is that for you? So I struggled with that. I was a big pleaser. A yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yes, I'll do it. Yes, I'll be there. Yes, I'll make this. But it was hurting me. Mm -hmm. And um, I was getting drained at one point. So what I had to do was I had to create boundaries. Healthy boundaries. I'll put that where yeah. not at this time, no. And like even with the Sundays where I don't take clients or I make sure. And there's times where I'll just say, I'm tired. Yes. Yeah, I'm tired. And I'll say that to my husband and my kids. And I put myself on timeout and sit all the way down in my room. Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm so glad yes. to hear that. But it took a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it took when I went into the hospital last year for five days for over exercise for over um for for just getting up every day at 4 a.m and not taking rest not taking a break and that's why i said to doc that the fact that she listened to our body didn't come monday morning do that it's okay like don't beat yourself up for not coming listen your body tells you we need sleep yeah and a lot of times we are running and i know i was on an empty tank not realizing how much rest i needed but I will say, thank God for that situation last year where I was in a hospital. It was called rhabdomolysis. Um, a lot of marathon um, runners get it, CrossFit, because we're over exercising. And that's it's just as important to have that balance, to not to to listen to your body, like you said. Yeah. yeah. But from that I learned to step back and say no. Yeah. But it took that for me. And um, it didn't have to. I don't want to take that for you either. Yeah. But listen, listen to your body. Um, if something's too heavy, don't do it. It's okay. And you can even tell the trainer because we'll be like, come on, you got, but you got it. It's okay to say no. Like, no, no, I'm good. And we will respect that because one thing we don't want is we don't want anybody to get hurt. We want yeah. you to keep coming back. We want you to feel good about it. So, and that was another reason why I became a trainer so I could be more knowledgeable wow. because a lot of people are not aware of it. 
So it's like, how do we keep that balance, stay in shape, still not feel like we're about to pass out because we don't want you to pass out, <laughs> but, and still feel good, feel good about yourself. Yeah. 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 You know, it's a shame, like with life, how it takes conditions, medical conditions in particular Yeah. or life circumstances, right? Because we're always going to go through like challenges. Right. And sometimes if we don't obey God, God will have us sit down. He'll sit us down. Yeah. And I'm so glad that you're healthy, that you're safe. I'm glad you found out what it was. I'm glad you took the rest. Yeah. And that you learned from that situation and that experience and decided to do something different moving forward. Definitely. And the other thing I learned while I was there was I had a roommate. Um, She actually passed away five days after I got discharged and um but prior to that the silver lining is we talked about God yeah. she accepted you know in his like that she believed or like it was it was amazing and I thought I everything has a purpose yeah and um it was it was just nice to see her because she was very upset and angry and before I left she was happy and um, mm-hmm. joyful so I really think that everything that happens and I know it's all aligned and there's a purpose in everything. Yes, there yeah. is. Yeah. And I'm so sorry that you lost your friend. Yeah, yeah, but she she's in a good place. Yeah. I, I definitely know that. And I'm glad I was able to be her roommate during that time yeah. before she transitioned. Wow. Yeah. 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 Everything is purpose driven. Mm-hmm. What are some common fitness myths or misconceptions that you've encountered? One of the myths is that women don't work out, like that they don't strength train or that um, my hair might get messed up. I mean, to the point where I'm not going to work out because of my hair, but I'm starting to see a lot of women come. Yes. And put in, you know, get their hair straightened or come back or make health a priority, um, which is nice. But at one point, I felt like that was a myth or like, even that we talked about going over to the other side, it might have some truth to it, but there are women who do it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I think you bring up a good one because this is one that really impacts the black community. Mm-hmm. Working out in hair. Yeah. Hair in the black community, our hair, black women, woo, we don't play that. <laughs> with our hair yes, and true. we want to work out we want to be healthy but if you just went to the salon and paid two three hundred dollars to get your hair done and you really want to go to body pump the next day now you're going to sweat out your two or three hundred dollars yes. and then for the women that can't do their own hair mm-hmm. that's also a challenge so now you know you have more women wearing braids or maybe yes. wearing weaves yes. or cutting their hair shorter making their hair more manageable right. or wearing their hair back in a bun or finding alternative ways yeah and we really have to do that ladies because we cannot continue to use our hair you know, as an excuse for not being healthy. Yes, very important. Yes, I love that. So how do you help clients overcome plateaus or frustration when they don't see what? We all want immediate results. Yes, so I have, well, I started in June, so it was a, so seven one-on-one clients. Um, and I explained to them, well, some, I'll give one example. You have, you have been this way for years. Yeah. So you can't expect in a week, 20 pounds is going to be lost. Like, yeah. no, no, it does not work that way. So give your body time and trust the process. Trust the process. If you're eating right, you're doing everything that you need to be to be healthier, and you're changing those habits, your body will catch up. Yes. Yeah, it'll catch up. Yeah. And honestly, out of the seven clients that I've started in June, it has worked. Wow. Everyone has had results, which yes. is nice. And their inches and their waistlines coming in. They're feeling comfortable in their jeans dropping down in size. Um, one young lady, it really wasn't about the weight for her, but she wanted to get stronger. She yes. got stronger. Another young lady, she was um, getting married. She wanted to get in her dress. She got in her dress. And those, she lost 10 pounds, but that was big for her because it took her years to do that. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God, I love that. And I'm even thinking about my own testimony with your nutrition coaching. I had a goal. I was blessed to be able to take my sons on a cruise and I knew that I wanted to enjoy this cruise food. And I had been working out out at the gym consistently for like, I don't know, 
eight or nine months and I'm like, man, I need to lose some extra weight before the cruise so that I can enjoy this cruise food, not get too out of hand. Right. And I had this goal of losing weight. I lost with Crystal's nutrition coaching. Now this is on top of me working out at the gym anywhere from four to six times a week. I hit my goal and I lost 10 pounds yes, in she four did. weeks. She did. With Crystal's awesome one-on-one -on -one personalized nutrition coach coaching. Yeah. So I went on this cruise 10 pounds lighter. I had just got my hair cut, <laughs> y'all. I was just <laughs> loving it. But you know that's true what they say, right, Crystal? You can't out-exercise a poor diet. And that's accurate. At, and you would think the four, six times a week, I was doing the same thing. Yes. I kept working out, working out. I'm like, I'm an instructor. I'm fine. I can eat whatever I want. So let me tell you, my cholesterol didn't say I could eat whatever I wanted. Exactly. My blood pressure, that was borderline high blood pressure a year ago. Because I, and I, I told you guys, I've been working out eight years. Yeah. But when that blood results and those things come back, they tell you the truth. And it doesn't matter your size. It doesn't matter if yes. you're overly overweight or or underweight. It's healthy. Healthy is not about the number. Yes. So, and and that's what made me say, okay, I've been doing this this long. What what am I doing? What can I do differently? How can I, um, as a personal trainer, not tell people just to close their mouth? You yes. know, not say, oh, just don't eat. Don't. No, you're going to have a snack once in a while. Okay. Yes. <laughs> like that's a part of reality. It tastes good. But how do we kind of balance that out where we're still Main, being healthy consistently, but then sometimes you might want the mac and cheese, like you'll say, right. or the sweet potato pie, um, but maybe it's more portion size, and maybe it's something that you're treating as a snack once in a while, a reward, and not your every day, yes. where it becomes you. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I love that. That is so important. So what are some of the biggest misconceptions people have about nutrition? I think people think, oh... Oh, you're healthy. You just eat salads. Like, that's what I hear a lot of. Oh. Like, people think it's just all vegetables where it includes lean meats. Yes. And, um, it's really like that added sugar. But I think a lot of times people think that healthy is overboard. Like, yes. oh, no, you're, you're a gym person. You have to be in a gym every day. Right. Or you have to only eat lettuce or spinach every day. And that's not the case. It's always, yeah, that's not it. Yeah, so. we have options. Yes. We have options. And I love what you said about basically what you're saying, everything in moderation. Correct. You can have things that you want to have, but we just need to have it in moderation. Yes. If you know you crave, uh, you know, peanut butter chews and you go and you buy a pack of peanut butter chews, don't eat the whole pack. Because <laughs> I had to be honest, y'all, <laughs> with my assessment, you know, what? these personalized assessments. Coach Crystal has you yeah. track your eating. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't want to write this down. I said, but I'm going to be honest. Yeah. I ate this whole pack of peanut chews and I had another pack the next. Crystal was like, yeah, no, you can't have the um, peanut. You can't have that many peanut chews. You can have some, but yes. not that many. I said, okay. Yeah. So I got that in moderation. So mm -hmm. I do love this lifestyle because I, I do still have yep. sweets or certain yes. things when I want, but I have it in moderation. I keep my, even now, so we started, let me see, July, August, September, mm -hmm. October, four, four months. months ago. Yes. Four months ago, I am still maintaining those same habits that I acquired. Yes. And it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. And that's for me too. It's been four months. I've maintained my same weight. Yeah. And I'm happy right where I'm at. Yes. Um, I don't, you know, everybody has their version of what makes them happy or joyful where you feel healthy. But this is the first time for me where I actually maintained it. Usually it's like a yo-yo goes up and down, yes. up and down. Those last 10 pounds are, are right where I need to be. But it's a lifestyle. Yeah. And when we say a lifestyle, we mean it's not something that you're rushing to get to. It's not a fad. It's not a diet where you're not eating bread for, you know, right. a certain amount of time. This is something that becomes a part of you where you understand it. And a lot of times I don't think we have that knowledge to understand. Even though it may seem basic, it really isn't because if that was the case, a lot of people wouldn't be taking the pills to get them there. Yeah. 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 That is so true. Yeah. I love that. So what strategies do you use to help clients stay accountable and motivated long-term? Because you know, it's always easier 
not easy but it's always easier to have that motivation when you're just starting something oh it's new it's fresh yeah but then when that wears off what strategies do you use? So even with the uh, nutrition coaching, I give out two packages that you can keep with you forever. So you can always re resort back to that package, which has your information in there that tells you the basic things that you need to eat that is available everywhere. Yeah. Um, fruit, vegetables, you can always pick that up. It's just a matter of making sure you're eating it. So, and a lot of times people think protein, 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 but we're, most of the time we're getting our protein. We're yeah. getting our meats where we have that. A lot of times what people are lacking are honestly the spinach, the things that, that we need. Those, those are the good carbs or, you know, those simplistic carbs that help you to maintain and have a healthy level of just within your bloodstream with your cholesterol and those things like that. So I'm giving you the tools that you can keep. It's not something I'm taking away from you. Yes. Um, when it comes with the personalized nutrition. So that's one thing that keeps them accountable. With the fitness part, I actually try to find things that people enjoy, okay. that they enjoy doing, where it doesn't seem like a chore. For example, there's one person I know, she loves spin. Right. So that's something no matter what, if I'm not there, she's gonna go to a spin class. Yeah. And it's not just personal training, but I incorporate the whole gym. I incorporate walking. Yes. What can you do at home while right. you're there? Can you step on that Peloton? Because I'm not gonna be with you. I might see you once or twice a week, but what are you doing those other five days? Yes. And that's why it's that holistic approach where it's like, oh, my trainer's not here. What do I do? You know what to do. Yes. Yeah. I love that. And I do love those resources that you leave with us with, our, with the personalized nutrition coaching. Cause I was, I remember there was a little time where I was kind of falling off a little bit. I'm like, oh, I reached my goal weight and I'm just, and I said, wait a minute, let me go back. How many calories again a day should I stay within? Yeah. So that is good because, you know, I was able to kind of get a reality check like, mm, okay, get back on track tomorrow. Yes. Like we said with the stages of change, mm -hmm. reoccurrence is a normal part of the stages of change. What's important is to get back on track to the action stage of change. Yes. I yes. love that. Thank you. All Thank right. You so so how do you encourage clients to overcome emotional eating or unhealthy relationships with food? Wow. So yeah, with unhealthy relationships, when I sit down and speak with them with food. So you mentioned this before. There's a part where I'm tracking their food. They're writing. So I, my uh, training is through NASM, which is like a National Academy of Science and Medicine. And there's a, a worksheet that we that you look at that put sometimes most often how often are you eating this type of food right. and by that it shows the relationship that people have and i say be honest because if you're not honest i can't help you yes right if we can't um tackle what's going on or why like the weight's not just happening just because like if that was the case you would just be shriveled away like if you you're not eating anything you're eating something yeah so it's a matter of being honest being truthful and then i kind of hit it right on the nail i'm just going to tell you the truth yes so if if you want services with me if you continue to do this yeah these will be your results yeah. if you continue to say eat the way having a whole pint of ice cream every day you will look like you eat a pint of ice cream every day like if you continue to so i'm very I hate to say it blunt, but I want to be realistic because I want someone to do that for me. Yeah. And it's out of love. I had one person, she sat on my couch and I said, if you continue to have 10 glasses of wine or whatever it is that you like to indulge in over the weekend, the whole week we're together, you smashed it. Like, wow. because your calories uh, of the alcohol and the added sugar serves no purpose. Yeah. It doesn't serve a purpose. So you're literally negating everything you just did. So yeah. you're wasting your time, you're wasting your money. And and you're um you're hurting yourself to be yeah. honest with you. Because if you continue to indulge in this, this is the effect. This is what's going to occur. So I honestly keep it I'm honest with them. You came to me for a reason, yes. right? So if you're here Let's talk about with those behaviors, if they, you continue those, then this is what will happen. Yeah. So yeah. And if you, you know, you continue back behaviors, 
then you'll see results. You'll have that victory when you jump off the scope or when you put on those jeans and you're like, oh, this fits good. Or even confidence. Yes. And confidence is big. Um, just being able to walk in a room and feel good about yourself. Yeah. 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 I had that accountability talk with Crystal when she saw the relationship I was in with those peanut shoes. Crystal said, no, ma'am. I said, <laughs> okay. <laughs> But I will say even after that, and you you did, you can still have your peanut shoes in moderation, but right. you saw results. And yeah, a lot of times when you see the results, you don't want to go back. True. Because yeah. I'm not even in a, I broke up with the peanut shoes, y'all. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> did you? You I have broke up with the peanut shoes. shoes. I don't even crave the peanut shoes anymore. And you know what? That will happen too. So your body will start to change. Like when you start eating healthier, yeah. when you eat um, certain things or drink certain things, your stomach might kind of turn up a little bit right. or you're like, hmm. Yeah, or even a sugar because now you're used to natural sugar from fruit too, which makes a difference. That is yeah. true. And talking about those peanut chews, because a lot of us, we love nuts and chocolate mix. Mm -hmm. And I love nuts. I've always loved nuts since I was a child. My grandmother used to have a big bowl of just raw nuts. Okay. And she would have the little crackers. And I remember I would just sit in my grandma's house and just try the different nuts. And I just love nuts. But there's something important that you said to me when I was writing down what I ate. I was eating nuts, like raw nuts, and you were like, oh, we need to do those in proportion because I was eating too many raw nuts. So, and you said to me, which is something important, is actually, you can actually have too much of something that's considered a good thing. Correct. Well, you can over you can overeat anything, to yeah. be honest with you. Even if you drink too much water, it's not good if you drink too yeah. much. Um, so, then that's why I say that word balance is really important. And even common size of um, your proportions. A lot of times we're eat, having too much meat. Yes. Where it needs to be the palm of your hand. That's it. That's it. Yes. But we'll have two to three times that size and don't wonder why our cholesterol is up. Yes. Yeah. And you figure so many of us, even though people have been scaling back with the economy on eating out, yes. but you think about when you eat out and those portion sizes that are presented at restaurants. So that's one thing we do when we I go to restaurants now is a lot of times I'll take half of it. Yes. And I'll um, just put it up. Because yep. a lot of times we're not really hungry. We're just, you're enjoying it and you're just with, you're talking and you just keep eating, eating, eating. Also with um, desserts, we'll split it. Like oh, among the family it. yeah. so it's not like we're not missing out but a lot of times you don't you don't need, you don't need all, all of it that. yeah you want the taste is good and yeah yeah i love that so what's the best way for someone to build healthy habits that stick especially if they struggled with consistency in the past because you know a lot of times well i tried it before and it just doesn't work so i'm not going to do it hmm come on we got to get back on track to a different mindset of health and wellness. Right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. So ways to make it stick. Yeah. Uh, I said, like I said before, you have to change your mindset. You got to start there. You have to, once you start believing it here, write it down. That's big. I write down my goals. Yes. I write it down. And then I go back to it. Or um, we talked about the vision board yes. prior to that vision vision what you want put it on paper show it and once you start manifesting that it will happen yes so start there like words are powerful yes. and i think a lot of times we're so used to like the text thing like we went back to that technology but and nothing's wrong with it but i'm saying start um start being purposeful with what you want and write it down there's power with that pen and writing things down too and and then the small steps we talked about that too start with those small steps which are huge those small steps are really big guys um even like i said start with three times a week 30 minutes yes three times a week 30 minutes i'm going to do this and it'll start to become a part of you yes yeah it's so true i love that so you said mindset which that is so important is that part of how you integrate mental wellness into your approach to fitness and nutrition yes because i think it's important to have a positive one we're always telling everybody else how good they are yes. we're always um empowering others but what about yourself oh it's important for you to tell your mind i can do this tell my tell your mind and your mindset that i'm cap more than capable that don't be defeated yeah. and i think you're with yourself 24 7 so be kind to yourself yeah yeah i love that 
You know, what resources, books, apps, programs do you recommend for those wanting to improve their fitness and nutrition? Actually, for nutrition, I, I'm big on FDA, FDA um, okay. which is a, a United States organization. If you put in FDA.org, I go there a lot because they have a lot of information on food. They, you can even type in some of the food even and look at the labels too. Okay. Um, I love them. I also, what websites? I'm trying to think of a great one. FDA is my biggest one. And you said Nick, Nick. Nancy. Oh, n n a s m dot org. So that's for like trainers. Um, oh. If you want to get certified for more things, and okay. I I love them because they're nationally recognized, and it helps me to be a better person for myself as well as others. Yes. Yeah. So that's if you if you're thinking about getting into that fitness world, definitely go through them. Um, it's an amazing program. They have all different things that you can do, but. I know a lot of people do YouTube, but yeah. however, you just gotta find one that works for you. Yeah, I'll put it that way. Like if it's something that's a little too tough, find something that's a little easier or not. E I shouldn't say easier, but challenging. But I can't really pinpoint a person on YouTube. But I know a lot of people that use Instagram. Yeah. Um, but I honestly, even if you check out some of your gym websites, maybe okay. that you may be going to, sometimes they have information that's good in your area yeah. of where you can go. I'm big on in person. Um, I I just think it makes a difference. But I understand how people need to go online too. Peloton, I'll go when I went away, I went on Peloton. Wow. Yeah, because I wanted to um they always have to bike in a lot of the hotels. Yeah. So that's nice, nice. too to do that. You can go on Peloton. They're made they have some good music and you're just it doesn't feel like I'm working out too. Yes. As well. So And that's the best part yeah. when you're working out and it doesn't even feel like work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the most rewarding part of your job and how do you continue to grow as a coach? Honestly, the most rewarding part are the people. Like, I love when I see someone where they started where they could barely squat and now they're squatting. Yeah. Or they're holding a plank even longer. Or it's just like those, that that change in them. Yeah. Or when people become consistent. Yes. Where it's not just a day or two. Or when I miss, I'm like, oh, I didn't see that person in two weeks. So... Um, it just feels good to give back. It feels good to give back and to do something that doesn't feel like a job. Like yes. this does not feel like a job to me. I say that all the time. Um, there's times where I just give stuff out for free because I just want people to be knowledgeable. It, it's, I'm just so thankful where I am right now. Mm -hmm. I really am. It, I, I'm so thankful for being, just to say I'm a personal trainer. Um, I, I work for the government. Next year will be 20 years. Wow. So, yeah, thank you. I started oh, off Crystal. pretty young, but, um, and I have my background is in sociology. I have my master's as well. Um, mm -hmm. But I've always loved people. But when it came with fitness, it was just something I did for fun. Yeah. And to show that gift and to be able to help others with it, it's amazing. I, yeah. I can keep going about that. Oh, yeah. I love this. I love your passion. <laughs> I do. I love it. I'm so happy for you. All of your consistency, hard work, and dedication over the years. And then you being a new entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And this, like when I go to her classes, I'm like, I went to a class a couple weeks ago. And I thought I was late for the class. <laughs> Because everybody was working out. No, it was Radiant Soul Fitness class. And the yes. class was jam-packed. And y'all, I panicked because I was like, make room for me. Is the class over? And they were like, the class is about to end. And the next class is about to start. I said, oh, whew, I got to get my workout in with Crystal. Yes. So Crystal, Thank tell you. us, for people that are wanting your nutrition coaching services, your personal training services to take a class with you, how can people reach you? So you can go on Radiant Soul Fitness via Instagram. You can DM me. I'll write, I'll send you a DM right back. As well as through Facebook. It's Radiant Soul Fitness. Also I have a website, radiantsoulfitness.com. So, and you'll reach me again. So there's all different ways. You can call Echelon as well. Echelon Health and Fitness, because I do my personal training out of there. Okay. Um, because of the relationship we have and because it's yeah. just promoted. So if you want to do group fitness classes, I'm there as a group fitness instructor through Echelon Health and Fitness. I teach 
five classes a week. Mm -hmm. um, there's spin twice a week, there's boot camp twice a week, and then there is body pump where you're strength training with that bar. So that's through Echelon Health and Fitness. If you want one-on-one -on -one with me, personalized training. And when I say personalized, I mean personalized. I'm finding out if your back is arched a little bit too much or if we need to work on that core or if it's the upper body that's overactive. So when I say personalized, I make it directly towards you. Right now I have one open and left. Um, just so one. Just one, just one. For the nutrition coaching, which is nice, that's something that's ongoing. Next month I'll have more availability than I usually take two to three clients a month because it is personalized and I'm meeting with you. I'm literally sitting down. Sometimes I'm going to your home, my Starbucks, and we're there for like an hour, hour and a half, mm -hmm. depending on you know what's going on, how the conversation is flowing. I never want to stop anyone. Um, and you can reach me through there too. And then I have the 12 week challenge that you saw. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Um, my, that one client from prior, this is my second session at Echelon Health and Fitness on Saturday mornings, we do 12 weeks. She lost 22 pounds, 22 Ooh. pounds, yes. In and 12 weeks? In 12 weeks, yes. She lost 22 wow. pounds. Um, her body fat went down, because that's what we're looking at too. Yeah. And so many of the other ladies and gents lost a lot of weight. In those 12 weeks, we lost 123 pounds total as a collaboration, which was wow. uh, amazing, including me too. So yes. um, it it's great. So that doesn't, we're full right now. Um, in January, I'll have openings, but it really depends on who's coming back. So always the ones that are in there now to get first dibs, and usually we'll have about five openings. I take up to 25 people in that class. Okay, yeah. you guys heard it here. <laughs> you guys better jump on it and reserve yeah. your slot because I'm telling you, when I was trying to get into that class, there was nowhere to go. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. I made yeah. it to the gym. I got to get my workout on with Crystal. So reserve your slots. Contact Radiant Soul Fitness and Crystal. It has been such a pleasure, such an honor to have my fitness queen role model. This is my fitness queen role model right here, y'all. I love Doc. I really oh, do. I do. Thank you. Thank you for, like I said, for having me. Yeah. I mean, this is my first podcast ever, and um, it's amazing to be able to sit here comfortably with someone that I admire, someone mm -hmm. who's doing great things within our community, and I wish you the best and all love. Oh my God, yeah. thank you so much, sis. I wish you the best. Thank and we're going to encourage, thank lift, you. uplift, encourage each other. And again, we collaborate. We do not compete. Yeah. Thank you all for joining us today. Have a good one. <laughs>